Right, good afternoon, Year 8. What we're going to be doing today is looking at how we grow microorganisms. Now, obviously, we would have done this as a practical in class, uh, so we won't get a chance to do this until we come back to school. So I'm going to talk you through the theory of it today and set you a couple of tasks based around this. So all of you should be able to state the way we grow microbes in a lab without cross-contamination. Um, you should be able to state <clears throat> the best conditions to grow microbes and a few of you be really clear about how to inoculate a plate of agar without cross-contamination. Okay, so we've got our three types of microorganisms from yesterday's lesson. Okay, what are they? So pause the video and name them. What is a pathogen? Please describe it. And then put a human blood cell and two types of microorganism in size order. So please pause the video and answer these questions. Okay, so this is what you should have got. Three types of microorganisms you could have had were the main three we learned about, bacteria, virus, and fungi. Um, if you did a little research, you'd also identify something called a protist. They're like um, amoebas, like single-celled uh, organisms. And there was a new kind of bacteria discovered, which is actually different from bacteria called archaea bacteria. These are the very ancient sort of bacteria that often found in things like volcanic vents. Okay, so those are uh, there's actually five choices you could have had. Um, what is a pathogen? That is a microbe that can make you unwell. And then it says put human blood cell and two other types of microorganism in size order. Now, this is difficult because you could have had fungi, bacteria or virus. So if you chose fungi, it would be fungi would be the largest then red blood cell, and then one of these would go after that. However, if you didn't have fungi, which go that, you would have red blood cell, bacteria, and then just virus. So viruses are definitely the smallest ones. Okay, so what we're gonna learn about today is how we grow microbes for studying, for investigation, okay? And if we were gonna do this in class, what we would have done was we would have got an example and grown colonies of bacteria on plates like this. Now these are called um, Petri dishes. And what they are is essentially sterile plastic dishes which are given um, like a growth medium, this agar jelly. And this jelly contains water and all the nutrients that bacteria need to grow very, very rapidly. So bacteria are so small it's difficult to see them. So we can't study individual ones but we do grow a colony in the lab, and that is the point of the agar plates, okay? And what we end up with are this. Now, here are several colonies of different types of bacteria. I want you to pause the video again and just bullet point how do we know they are different. So do that now, please. Okay, so the way we know there are several different types of bacteria are they are different colours, brown, yellow, grey, different textures as well. These ones are sort of a fuzzy edges and they're white. Um, different size colonies. Okay, these ones are quite small. Yeah, these ones are rather large. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to see how we would actually go about growing these. So why do we grow microbes on a plate? Let's ask some questions first. Right, we grow them so we can study them. We simply cannot study one single bacteria. We need lots of them to be able to know what we're dealing with. Okay, so firstly, we need to write down an explanation for this. Why do we grow microbes on a plate? So that we can study them and because we've got lots of them so that we can actually see them. Right, now the next question is, what is agar jelly? And how do we avoid contamination when growing microbes on a plate? I'd like to once again pause the tape and I'd like to look up the answers to those questions. Okay, so quick internet research. Write those questions in your book and how, uh, what the answer is. Okay, so off you go, please. Okay, so agar jelly is a substance which contains water, nutrients, everything bacteria need in order to grow optimally. That means the best. Okay, how do we avoid contamination when growing microbes on a plate? We make sure we don't actually touch them. Okay, and I'm going to show you this in a bit more detail in a few minutes. So growing microbes are grown on a plate like this, and one colony like this will contain literally millions, sometimes billions of bacteria. Remember, bacteria are really, really small compared to even our own cells. So 
how was this discovered? So in 1878, uh, Robert Koch discovered how to grow bacteria in a Petri dish, named after his assistant Julia Petri, Julius Petri, sorry. He was able to discover which bacteria cause certain diseases, including TB and cholera. Scientists still grow microorganisms in lag so they can be investigated. So these are examples of a bacteria with a flagella, because it's got the tail that has to move. This is Staphylococcus, and this is the kind of thing that will often give you a sore throat. So what I'm going to do is I want you to click on this link. And I'm going to put this into uh, the post, and you can have a quick look at this. This is how we grow agar gel, uh, bacteria in agar. Okay, this second one is just a time lapse video, so you, you don't have to watch that one. So, we grow bacteria in agar. This provides all the nutrients needed for microbes to grow. And we grow them at the best temperatures. We grow them at 25 degrees in school and not at 37, because if they grew at 37 degrees, which is optimal, they'd probably grow out of control and become what we call pathogenic. There could be a real, real risk to us. Okay, so just moving on to your next two tasks. Firstly, when scientists are growing microbes, they have to avoid contamination to ensure that they do not grow on any other microbes. So again, I'm going to put this video link into the posts. I want you to watch this. Okay, and then in assignments, you will have a copy of this. Now you can print this off, or if you haven't got a printer, you can simply uh, just copy it out into your book. What you've got here is what we call aseptic technique. This is how we would properly prepare an agar dish to grow a sample of bacteria. Now you need to try and put these in the right order. Okay, so you need to cut them out, the description with the diagram, and you need to think very carefully, what is the order that these go in? Okay, so go to assignments, print these off, Cut them out and stick them down in your book in what you think is the right order, and we'll check those next lesson. Okay, so um, also in assignments, there is a couple of questions I'd just like to very quickly try. They're just about how we would do this aseptic technique. So how do we grow bacteria on a Petri dish? And again, um, we'll go through the answers at the beginning of next lesson, hopefully give you some time to do that. So you rate. Um, you should have watched the two videos. Again, I'll put the links in assignments. I'll also add them on to show my homework just in case you get stuck. Um, good luck and uh, we'll go through the answers all tomorrow. Okay, thank you.